If you don't know how to code, but you want to take advantage of Airtable scripts, look no further than this video. I'm going to be going step by step into the steps I take every time I implement a script. And coming from a non-coder like me, this is a big deal. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about how we do that, swing by our website. I will include a link below this video. Check that out and don't miss our Airtable crash course. It is a free crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. But that being said, let's just jump into the heart of this video. And before we get into how I set forth a script or how I, how I go about putting a script in motion, I have a confession. A lot of people might not know this, but I am actually a notoriously bad coder. I'm very, very comfortable when it comes to building formulas inside of Airtable because in my opinion, they're very similar to Excel and I was quite comfortable writing formulas in Excel before I made the switch. That being said, that does not necessarily, in my mind at least, equate to being good at code. I don't know how to write Java and I feel like I need to be really upfront with that because first of all, none of the code that I'm gonna use in this video is my own. And second of all, I want you to know that if you're not a competent or if a confident coder, that this is, that doesn't mean that you can't build some awesome stuff using Airtable scripts. So if that's of interest, we're just gonna jump right in here. In my, on my screen, you're gonna notice that I have a pretty straightforward table. I've got three different things. I've got clients. So we've got a table of contacts, right? This is pretty standard stuff. We would normally keep first name, last name, email address, address, all those you know pieces of information that are relevant to our, uh, our the people that we uh, do business with. Then those people, of course, link to orders. So in this case, I'm saying, well, I've got an, a formula that's generating the auto an auto number for the formula. If you're curious about how to do that, by the way, run a little auto number. This is going to create a new number for every single record. And then you can just add a static number to it, like in this case, 1110 plus the auto number. It's going to produce a unique record ID every time or a unique order number every time. I'm also tracking other things like what's the amount of this order? What's the date of the order? And then we've got that linked relationship to clients, right? Like who put this order in? Uh, but then the part here where this is getting kind of cool is when then we say, hey, an order consists of multiple hours in this example. Now, this is different, of course, for every different company. Uh, but I'm imagining a situation where a company might sell blocks of time. So you might pay for like consulting hours. And if you buy a lot in bulk, you might get a discounted rate or something along those lines. I was looking for this kind of a solution the other day when I was doing some work on one of our internal databases. And I stumbled upon this and I just thought I needed to share it. So basically the idea is an hour is created, one or more hours are created and linked back to that order. So if I were to do this manually, for example, I could say, okay, uh, Keanu Reeves put an order in, he paid us 750 bucks and maybe he bought six hours. Well, I'd have to create those hours manually. So I'd have to create an hour and say, no, it wasn't order 1112, it was 1113, let's link to the right order, and then it moves it down. And then I would have to come down and I'd have to hit, you know, enter, 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 or shift, enter to get the number of orders that he put in. And then if I didn't want to stare at all of these all opened up, you know, I'd have to, you know, shrink them down. And you can see that every time we do anything like this manually, there's a big margin or a big room for potential error. And so I don't like to do it manually. And that's why I went looking for a script that could handle this for me. So that's the scenario. But I want to you know, again, paint this picture where I'm not comfortable with code. I didn't write any of this from scratch. So what do I do? Well, the first thing I do is I go onto the Google and I just start searching. And one of the first things that came back when I was looking for this, I searched for how do I create a button that will uh, automatically link to multiple records in Airtable? It was a long search. There's a little bit of, uh, of combing around to do, but Lo and behold, I will almost always stumble upon something from the Airtable community. And I point out that this all starts with the Airtable community because I think it's really important to point out that the Airtable community is incredibly supportive of 
itself. <laughs> uh, there are people on the community that are putting forth a lot of really cool code, making it available, and just putting out resources and assistance and helping one another to you know, really leverage the true power of Airtable. It's a really cool place, and if you're not active there, I'd certainly recommend at least checking it out because you can find a lot of answers here. Anyhow, you can see that uh, Matthias has uh, posted this, you know, some, some time ago about asking about this very problem. You know, he's asking, how do I, you know, make a button that adds projects under, you know, my, my table, etc. And you can see that there are actually quite a few answers here. here. Uh, one coming from Camille, who is a fantastic uh, advocate of Airtable and code. If you ever find her on the forums, definitely, uh, you know, follow her and, and, and pay attention to what she says. Shout out to Camille. Um, but the one that really struck me was this one posted here by Mike. I tried all of these and I really liked the code that Mike put together here. So tip of the hat, Mike, if you watch this, thanks so much for the code. This was super helpful. I also feel comfortable using it because he's put forth this little copy right here in the chat or in the comment, uh, basically saying, go ahead and use this. It's granted free of charge. Uh, you know, he's not trying to make any money off of this little script. Thanks so much for that, Mike. And, uh, and so, yeah, let's, let's grab it. So basically what I do is I just grab this whole thing and I do a control C. Now I've already created this script inside of my database, but I'm going to pop open the apps here. Remember, Airtable rebranded its blocks. They are now apps. And you can see that I did have this here previously. I'm just gonna ditch this and we're gonna start over from scratch. I'm gonna install an app and I'm going to go to that scripting block or scripting app, sorry, old habits. So then install from here and that is going to put this in. Now you can start with a lot of these things that Airtable has already given us some templates around. In this case though, I don't need that because I already grabbed the core script that I'm gonna be using. So I can just say start from scratch and I'm gonna highlight all of the text that's in here and I'm just gonna paste that, that uh, code that I already copied. Now, really quickly, if you're not really familiar with code, when you see this, uh, this slash here and this, this text here is slightly grayed out and it has these asterisks before it, this is telling us that these are comments that were left in the code. This is not actually gonna do anything when the code runs. It's really here for us when we're reading in the code itself. So, you know, Mike's kind of covering his all bases here and saying, hey, the software is provided as is. Uh, pretty standard, you know, stuff here in terms of making sure that uh, he's not held liable for anything that breaks. So then he's gone in here and told us really what the script is and he's left us some notes for what you can do to change this script and make it work for you. In this case, you might notice that he mentions that the script prompts for every uh, for an input every time it's run. For some users, one or more of the values may be the same with every execution. And so in those cases, you can come into this hard code area and actually hard code those pieces. So I'm gonna pause right here. I'm gonna pop back into my database and my parent database, my, excuse me, my parent table in my database is the orders table. So I wanna create a parent relationship from orders that creates multiple hours in, uh, in the hours table. So parent is orders, hours is the child. And so that relationship is gonna be consistent every time, right? I wanna be able to say, every time I run this script, that's what I wanna have happen. One order leads to multiple hours. And then inside of hours, I wanna link them to orders here. So quick pause, this orders is the name of the field. This orders is the name of the table. And that's important for when we go in here and play with this code a little bit. So let me pop that code open again. The parent table, if you recall, is orders. We have to get this verbatim. I believe that uh, capitalization matters. So double check your work here. And then child table is hours for us. And the link field name is also orders. Remember, there's a delineation between the two. I should have probably given them a different name just so we knew which was which. So that's it for this. Now, I want the record count to vary every time I put in a new order, meaning I want an, a flexible number of hours to be created. So I'm not going to hard code the new record count. I'm gonna say I'm done editing and we're gonna give this a test run. So let's flip back into orders and I'm gonna create a new order. Obviously it automatically gets an order number. I have to give it a date, we'll make it today. And we can assign this to somebody. Let's say Kristen Bell put in an order of $900. How many hours did she buy? Maybe she bought 10. 
I don't want to go in and manually create them. Let's see if we can get the script to do it for us. I click run on the script and it's prompt prompting me for the parent record. But you'll notice when I click parent record, it's only showing me records in the orders table. And the reason I really love this is because we've already told it, hey, our parent table is always orders. So it knows that that's, it's looking for a record in that table, right? And so I can now click that record, select that, and now it's asking us to tell it the number of records it wants to create and link to this order. In this case, I said, I think 10. So we'll make it 10 and hit enter. And just like that, 10 records are created and linked to this order. Now I've never left the Airtable uh, environment. This is entirely inside of my database and it's not using automation per se. It's using a script that is doing these actions that we've told it to do. And so here we can see that 10 records were created, count 10 right there, 10 records were created and attached back to the appropriate order. Now, if I want to kick this up just a little bit more, what I can do is create a button. And I'm really, really excited about this option within buttons. So let's make a button that creates hours. And we're going to make a button here. And I can label the button to be whatever I want. So it'll be uh, make new hours. And we can pick whatever style we like. Maybe I really like this, uh, this purple. Now for the action step, I want to run that script. And I have to tell it, of course, what scripts to run. Now, if you haven't already put the uh, script in your database, of course, you'd need to do that. So install. But in this case, I already have this script. So first I have to tell it what dashboard this is in. So there is the capability of us to have multiple dashboards that hold different apps inside of our database. In this case, I only have the one dashboard, so easy choice. And I've only got the one script, so again, easy choice. But once I have that all picked out, just click save. And now I've got this nice button. It looks like the way I wanted to present it, in this case with purple text. Maybe I actually want to have it a little, little, uh, little blocked out there. And when I push this button, it's going to run the script specifically for this record. So remember the first time that we did this, we had to pick the record and then tell it the number of orders to create or the number of hours. In this case, I create a new order. Date of order, let's make it again, 10-1. This time maybe Keanu Reeves orders from us again. Pays us $800. Now we need to make those hours. Maybe he paid for six hours, I'm not sure. Once we hit that number, we hit enter. And you'll notice that this time I did not have to pick which record was going to be the one that I wanted to link against. Because thanks to this button, now that script knows, hey, when I push that button, I'm doing it for that specific record. Now, to kind of go beyond that, if we wanted to add more records to a pre-existing order, we could do that by clicking here. And now this time you see the parent record was changed to 1114, which is the button, that, well, is the record associated with the button I pushed. We can add two more records, hit enter, and now if we pop back in here to hours, we'll see that where we previously had 10 of these before, one through 10, now we've added these additional two. So as you can see, this is a pretty flexible script. And just to kind of drive this all home, I know very little about coding. And so I just want to stress that where, you know, don't be afraid to jump into the Airtable community and check out all the resources that people have put together. There's so many excellent you know, users out there who are trying to make more information available. So again, huge tip of the hat to both Camille and Mike for answering this question of Matthias on the, uh, on the, on the forum. Thank you so much to you and everybody else who's contributing all this awesome code because people like me wouldn't be able to do it without any of your help. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, Swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.